Hi Libby. Yeah, I think I'm still nesting. <laughs> oh, Mairead, it's warm here too. Must be about 25 degrees. <laughs> I'm boiling. <laughs> Hi Suzanne. I'm on Wi-Fi today, so we'll see if that's any better. Hello, Aya. I've just popped some, uh, hi Suzanne, yeah. I've just popped some uh, may tree around the, uh, I've just popped some um, may tree around the nest. It's a traditional flower at this time of year, uh, maypole dancing, May Day holidays. So May, May's a, May's a good month. And so I've just popped that around the nest so you can see. Hi Ellen and Eileen, lovely that you could make it today. Uh, I've just popped that beautiful May around. Uh, I just, you know, was painting the nest yesterday, did three versions of it. And we, you know, we tried everything. We tried the dark, the middle and the light, just, just, just to get an idea of composition, what might or might not work. Uh, where I got to was I really liked, I really liked the light version. I thought that had something. Hi Cheryl, nice to see you. And um, Georgina. I, I sort of really, uh, yeah, great. <laughs> I'm surprised you could tear yourself away from the garden, Georgina. It is amazing today. So uh, this was the light version. So this was the high key. There's still a little bit of low key stuff that's reading in here, but uh, most of it's pretty much high key. And I'm gonna use that as a color inspiration for today because it helps to have something uh, like a color key so that you don't get too um, bogged down in sort of heavy colors. So I did a little, uh, I did a little ground this morning and um, just have now done, hi Valerie and Annika. I did a, just a quick drawing there over a sort of a, an acrylic base that I did. And I'm gonna be working with oil and cold wax today so the first layers, really, I don't use too much cold wax. And um, I think it just helps to, uh, you know, just, just get the paint sticking first and then we can do other things later. So in normal fashion, I'm going to just soften the wax a bit. And just give the painting a little roll of just clear wax. So now this has gone from an acrylic painting into an oil painting, just like that. So I can't work any more with water-based media because it's not gonna stick. Any loose acrylic paint is going to come off onto that roller as well. That's also good. You notice I'm working on a circle today. Just thought I'd give a different. Uh, I have these circular canvases, and uh, I just thought I'd give this one a go. It's just a matter of trying to lock it in. That's the main thing. I'm just going to give this a nice coating so that it's going to be friendly to wax that we're going to be painting. So I'm going to start with uh, the normal sort of way, blocking in our darkest dark. And when we were looking at the uh, high key painting that we were doing yesterday, uh, what I did find, uh, howdy Lee, <laughs> nice to see you. While I was, yeah, we'll just leave that now because it might get wobbly. Um, when I was working yesterday, it was quite interesting to work with the different types of darks. And what I did on the bottom of the painting is I did paint the darkest dark uh, as a little strip down the bottom of this study. So I knew, so I know, um, 
what is my darkest dark in this painting I'm going to keep these three paintings as teaching dem you know, demo things because they're really useful so you know as a if you're doing a sketch uh, you know mark your darkest dark I don't want any colors in this painting that go darker than this gray at the bottom Okay, so everything I'm going to mix is going to be very much high key. Hi Mary, lovely to see you. Hi Rachel and Bev, super. Oh Dort, hi. Uh, so I think the idea is to keep it as abstract as possible and um, just work with this idea of shape and you know I want some of the idea of having the Mayflowers on the side so let's get started and I'm going to choose a very flexible brush in the beginning but I just want to just mark in a few of the darks and we'll just maybe get some So I'm changing the blue. I've been using ultramarine blue, but I'm going to switch to cerulean blue. I could use cobalt blue as well. I'm going to switch to a lighter blue to mix my darks. I've just got a Michael Harding one there. Oh, I should put gloves on. Got plenty of gloves, it's all right. Lovely chef on the side here. Yes, I try to wear gloves when I'm working with uh, cold wax because, um, you know, you are working with solvents there, so. Try and work with gloves with this stuff if you can, possibly can. Solvents are absorbed through your skin uh, into your liver and uh, unfortunately with solvents it's very very hard once the solvents start to accumulate in your liver for your liver to process those solvents at least these are vegetable solvents it's not quite as bad as uh, mineral solvents so just looking at our color key if we need white we will add white but we don't want anything we don't want anything darker than the grey at the bottom of this. So I'm gauging how that's going to work. So it automatically by setting up a high key painting, we've got to be more inventive with the colours that we use. So I'm just going to use it to uh, block in the form. Just very loosely. It's a lovely warm day, so you know, paint it. Just using the brush very, trying to balance the brush at the end, almost like a conductor's baton. So the brush, the flexibility of the tip of the brush is doing the work for me. I'm not having to drag the brush at this stage. So I've got two things. I can look at the nest from life and I've also got my sketch to help me to gauge where the darks are as well. And the way I've done the circle is I've kind of put the focal point in here, which is why I've got the bright blue there underneath to uh, pull your eye around into that part of the painting. So, you know, that'll help having an underneath cut. Those rooks, I tell you, I give up. <laughs> Or the pterodactyls <laughs> as they are so you know even if you're painting in an abstraction you know the type of tools you use you know you can use brushes for oil and cold wax it just depends on how much cold wax you know you want to put in there now there's a lot more sort of dark here at the bottom of the nest and then we have this gorgeous greenery that comes in down there. So I do want to sort of have something of that. And then just down here. I've got a few of these branches sort of uh, 
coming out here. So let's get them in. I'm trying not to overwork, actually. That's my aim today. Um, you know, I loved the acrylic painting yesterday, but for me, I just felt it, it just went a little far. So I'm going to try today if I can leave some of the freshness and the looseness of the drawing. Um, and you know, let the mark let the mark speak a little bit. So it might be just thinking very carefully about this motion of the nest. It's wider at the bottom and narrower at the top. So you know, get that drawing right right from the start. Now what's happening in the middle of the nest? If I squint, it's kind of dark in here but it's light here. So, you know, I'll just pop some dark. And remember, this is the darkest we are going. So, you know, perhaps around the egg there. You might just, that's gonna be our darkest dark and our lightest light just in here. So let's just put that in like so. I'll carve into that with my squeegee. I'm really setting up the, the kind of textures I want in this. I really want this a little looser than yesterday. I don't want to have it too much like a diagram. I just want it. get that in. So I have a bit of solvent in this uh, uh, dark colour here and that will evaporate quite quickly in this, uh, in this weather. I quite like the fact that you know, I can cut into those lovely colours underneath leaving something like this here um, and, or if I decide that I need more colour showing then you know I will cut back into it to reveal the negatively clean the uh, space. So I'm going over a few of those flowers now with that grey. Uh, that was just for me to know where they are. It'll always be lighter underneath there, so I'll know where they are. But that was just in the uh, early stages that I can place these light spots of light, really. You just sort of think of it in that sort of abstract way. So squinting and looking at our original, uh, our original study thinking of how I might want that. You know, placing a little bit more in here. Get a little bit of that motion going. Put a tiny touch of blue in there. I put the blue in there because I want us to go in there. So the cooler color will recede a bit more and will help us to give us a bit of spatial depth in there too. Go around the form. To help us to do something within that semicircle. All right, we're going to mix up, but now we have this sort of relatively warm grey under here. Let's blend that just a tad. So I don't. I, you know, I want to kind of lay things down and then just leave them. 
um, rather than feeling I have to come and repaint things all the time. So it's a bit of a gentler process. Uh, I need to mix up now a kind of a mid, the mid tone of this. I'm actually going to use uh, a sort of a beige. A beige grey colour. So I've got a kind of a beige, I've just tucked a little bit of that blue grey into it. We'll see in a minute. I'm uh, just going to just find places where I can see that. Just pop that in. And really nice if uh, you know, some areas where you can just come in with that quite strongly. I'm not thinking really branches, I'm thinking, you know, where are the tones of this beigey grey coming in? And because it picks up the colour underneath, it's making it slightly darker. So I have mixed the colour quite light because I know that it's going to be blending with the grey underneath. So I've compensated for the colour by... Some of these kind of lines are quite useful. I keep re I keep drawing them and they get covered up and I draw them again. But the blue and the underpainting is starting to really make a difference with how that's working. You know, and if I get stuck I can refer to this. into that as the colour is underneath. So I'm always thinking this layering with cold wax, this is the beauty of it. It's so easy to do this. I can make lines sharper or by just taking away painting right up to. When you sort of first start a painting, you, you you kind of find your way into it, just feeling feeling your way. Where's it? You know, where's it talking to you? you know, what's your color palette? What's the key? Mixing some stronger yellows now. Not really yellow. It's sort of a straw color. 
with 50-50 cold wax now. As I get more into the uh, so I'm just thinking, you know, where can I see this? Where, where is this light? Where is this light stuff? Come in with the squeegee and move it around. like not being too worried about making sticks and branches just feeling the form Very different than doing it with acrylic. Because acrylic, it dried straight away, you know, and it was very difficult to sort of get anything to move. So, you know, with the oils, we have a lot more scope for that. Using that uh, shape of the nest. with a few let me know if there are any questions about the process I'm coming in now with a very small brush actually what I did yesterday that I enjoyed was just sort of layering up some of these thinking with that duck laying these branches in a way that she was you know all about protecting the egg that's what she was doing another tiny touch of yellow in here because I don't want it to be stark white and we'll go back into that later Decide she likes the idea of painting a nest on a round tree. Oh, right, yes. Yeah. So I had the canvases here, and you know, I just sort of thought, why not? Why not? So, if I've come in with a warm color like the yellow, I like to come in with a cool com uh, complement of it. And um, so now, you know, I'm going to come in with a gray. It's a bit gluggy. What I do is I just come in with my roller and soften that. This kind of gives you a bit more scope for not having lumpy paint, but you do get a nice tone. I could put marble dust into it at this stage, but. to get that grey. Getting a little bit of that interesting blue there. I don't want it to take over the painting. I'm going to move the solvent, it's about to fall off. I'm coming in with a brown, 
kind of a stick colour really. Again it's got cold wax in it. Use my brush again. So this is much more of a stick like colour. Going to mix just you know, get this drawing back in again. Just love, you know, the fact is I could, you know, scrape it all off and go back into it. all about how these sticks have been laid in. And this is an uh, this is an initial block in as well. I mean it's an oil painting so it will take time to build up all these colours. Is the limestone dust that you use to show marble dust outside? Yes. Yes it can. You can use uh, limestone dust it's perfectly fine and I do use that as well just looking and making these if you remember we painted negatively between these branches brought in some interesting color that way. Putting in these darks. The nest is sort of here. This is the greenery down there. Okay. Might come in with that lighter colour now. Again, reinstate that. Might be a slightly different place that I sort of feel something needs to be, I can put that in. Yeah, this is so much faster in acrylic, but it's nice to build this up, this lovely richness with the oils, which I, yesterday with the acrylics, you know, it just, is, it just dries, just dries so flat, you know, it's just not as rewarding. I'm going to add a tiny touch of orange into this mixture, just warm it up even more. Standing back a little. This is really the block in today. And we'll leave this to dry overnight. I just mixed a little um, burnt carmine now into some of these branches as well. doesn't look like much is happening but just, I just want to build this up so that we have some really interesting colour in there which I will then roll and use this as a layer underneath I'll work on that this afternoon Up 
in the green now so it's going to have time to dry overnight so we can start working on all the foliage and things tomorrow. I need the green to be part of the painting otherwise the green will just sit out like a sore thumb when I put it on later. Let's put that on with a squeegee. see how that's going to eventually build up to being plants surrounding so I just need to get that in that's where I can see it because we have quite a lot of solvent on here you have to be very careful you could just actually end up taking as much off as you put on so just treading Treading a little careful. Let's get that in down here. So this is all going to be green down here. get that lovely foliage green so that dries overnight we can work the next layer with that can't really finish this in one session so. but how do you do the setup that's what you want to do Lots of light green here. Just get that in. Just as I'm feeling it. That spring green, I need some more. More cold wax, which I'll take out with my spatula and hopefully it doesn't break. But it won't break now because it's really sunny. It only breaks in winter time when the cold wax starts to get a little hard in winter time but actually is a little needs a little bit of softening up you know if your studio is cold in the morning right, just mixing up some of these gorgeous greens with the cinnabar light this is my go-to color at the moment I think now this it, it does look much better when you layer that over something dark so it's nice to have that darker green there you can play around with it just get it down a little you see where the violet's coming through how interesting that is and where we've got some moss growing around this nest you know. again it's a painting so what is in real life is different to what we're the way we're looking at something and here so the it's really trying to decide the moss color and the may cut may leaves color is our biggest issue how's it looking from there okay any other questions that's all that's fine just going to block some of this in here now as well so we're all set to go tomorrow actually I'll keep working on it a little bit I just want to so I've left some of the lines and um, just you know just to give it some um, graphic quality I could scratch into it as well but I did that other scratchy one it got a little aggressive I felt for the subject so I don't really want to do uh, too much of that it's gonna just place the egg there like so 
can always move things around. Just so that I have some of this colour underneath here. I just need a warm colour underneath so I can put the colder white on the top later. And come in with that brown right up to the edge so that I know you can get the shape as much as possible. It's really just a white shape and a bit of a basket really. the form like so so we haven't added any of the violets or anything today we've just locked in the basic colors and um, you know where we've seen the greens We've blocked that in. You know, it, it'd be quite nice to have some sort of ready, uh, ready browns, you know, coming in here. It just is a nice foil for the colour palette. So, you know, again, I'm aware that's our darkest grey, so I don't want to spoil this by coming in with anything too light. So having, you can see how that's actually just really lifted the nest basket. Um, but uh, having done the study, it's really great. I can get a good gauge for um, how these colors are going to sling together. Now that I can, we'll see this tomorrow, but you know, once you start layering these violet grays and the blue grays over these yellows and oranges, you start to get a lot more movement in the color palette and also it works beautifully with the greens just remember the top of your canvas as well um, sometimes it's easy to forget that we can always come in with more lines later but i'm actually um quite uh quite pleased with this i think that's for a first pass it's very easy to get into a mess but the sketch yesterday really helped me find my way. It's a complicated subject and, you know, you can easily find the placement of things can be a bit odd. You know, I will probably bring down the shape of the basket of the nest a bit more here, like so. So it's a bit wider there. And um, it's kind of almost like a heart shape, actually. When you look at it, that's the that's the fun. Okay, so here's our blocking already, and we've done really well today. That's what we're looking at there. I'll remind you <laughs> that was the nest, and here's our first pass with oil and cold wax with. Um, using a very limited palette. I have Cinema Green Light, uh, Ice Blue, which is a Richardson colour, um, Cadmium Orange, Cadmium Yellow, Extra Pale Yellow Light, and White. So you know, a really limited palette, but really maximising the range of colours that I can mix from the limited palette and keeping this high key. So. I hope that's been a help. Hope you'll uh, see what happens tomorrow or have a look online and see where I take it. But uh, if not, I will um, thank you for joining me. And